Hey everybody, welcome to page 48. Today we're gonna solve functions with multiple angles. Um, so what's gonna happen basically is anytime you can see, and they use these letters here, sine of KU or cosine of KU or tangent of KU. In other words, anytime there is a variable or a value in front of our variable, some kind of funny is gonna happen. So we gotta be aware of those now. We're gonna add that in. So what I mean by that is take a look at this first one. We're just gonna dive right into this again. Um, this first one, we can see that there's this 3t right here, right? What I want you to do is imagine that that is just theta for now. 2 cosine of theta minus 1. I'm going to even rewrite it here. 2 cosine of, I almost put the 3, of theta minus 1 equals 0. Solve that. That's it. Keep it basic for a second. We're only going to solve for that problem. So we're going to add our 1 to this side. That cancels. And then we divide by 2, divide by 2. So essentially, when all of this works out, we end up with cosine of theta equals positive 1 half. But we know that it wasn't cosine of theta. It was cosine of, I'm going to erase that now, 3t. So rewrite that as cosine of 3t equals 1 half. That said, I don't expect you to do that. You don't have to cover up the 3t. I just want you to solve the problem and ignore the 3t from the beginning, right? We're not stressing about the fact that there's a 3 in front of our variable yet. We're going to get to that in a second. Basically, we've gotten, sorry, we've gotten here and, and now we're going to solve the problem like normal. When would cosine of theta equal one half? It's still the same process as before. We're ignoring the fact that there's a 3t here. Okay, we're going to come to it. So when would cosine give us one half as a solution? Noting that we are solving on the interval of all real numbers. So we are solving using infinity. So with that, we know that one half comes up on two spots for cosine. So we know that this happens at when theta equals um, pi over three because it's the x value, right? It's the x coordinate. So it's going to be in quadrant one and it's also going to be in quadrant four. So it's also going to be at five pi over three. Those are the two spots that cosine equals positive one half, pi over three and five pi over three. But it's not theta equals anymore. Now it's 3t equals pi over 3, and 3t equals 5 pi over 3. So see how before what we did is we'd say, oh, theta equals pi over 3, or theta equals 5 pi over 3. We're not changing it. We're just now using, instead of it saying theta, it says 3t equals pi over 3, and 3t equals 5 pi over 3. Noting also that it did say find it on the interval of all real numbers, we got to put our infinity here, right? So this technically was plus or minus 2 pi k, plus or minus 2 pi k. Um, and again, that would have technically been on here too, right? Plus or minus 2 pi k. So it's still not changing anything. We're still doing everything the same. But now you're not done solving, right? So now there's just an extra step at the end. We got to finish solving this because it says divide by 3. So I think some people get confused when you divide by three though, because you're like, uh, how do I divide this fraction by three? That gets a little bit weird. If you're okay with it, you can do that. What I'm gonna show you though is just doing it this way. Since we don't really have a confident way to divide fractions by three, that gets a little bit weird. And we gotta do a lot of keep change flip. Let's instead do the, the what's the opposite of dividing by three is, well, we could multiply by one third. I think people tend to be a little bit more comfortable with that. When I multiply by one third, that is going to cancel the three out. So I'm left with t equals, and then we got to multiply this one third to both things over here, here and to here. So one third times pi over nines, well, one times pi is pi. Three times three is nine. And we've got our plus or minus. And since this is technically on a fraction, it's technically two pi k over one. Well, two pi k times one is two pi k. And one times three is three. So it becomes plus or minus two pi k over Three. So that's our first answer. Very ugly compared to what we were doing before, but that is going to be what it looks like. Over here, same thing. When we multiply by one third to cancel out this three, and we multiply that one third to everything over here. So this cancels, and I get t equals one third times five pi. So one times five pi is five pi. Three times three is nine. And we can see what's going to happen here. Again, this is still over one. So 2 pi k times the 1 on top is 2 pi k, and then 1 times the 3 on the bottom is a 3. So 5 pi over 9 plus or minus 2 pi k over 3. So over here, 
Same idea. Let's do it this time without adding in that extra theta, right? We know we're going to subtract square root of 3. We're going to ignore the 3 in front of the t. Just disregard it for now. So 2 sine 3t equals negative square root of 3. And then we'll divide by 2 here, divide by 2 here. And I ultimately get sine of 3t equals negative square root of 3 over 2. So ignore the 3 for a sec. When would sine give us negative square root of 3 over 2? Now, sine is the y value, so y is negative in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4. So I have two answers. One, two. Noting that I'm putting whatever this is as what it equals. So 3t equals. So sine would be 3 pi, sorry, square root of 3 over 2 um, on that pi over 3 space, right? But we're in the third quadrant. So over 3, when we're pi over 3 in the third quadrant, we're really at 4 pi over 3. And when I'm pi over 3 in the fourth quadrant, we're at 5 pi over 3. Remember, it's one less than double the denominator. And we still have to do our infinite set of solutions. So it's plus or minus 2 pi k for sine, plus or minus 2 pi k for sine. And now the only additional step is that you have to multiply by 1 third to cancel out that 3. So multiply by 1 third here. That cancels this. And since we multiply by one third, we got to do it on this side as well. So we end up with t equals one times four pi is four pi, three times three is nine, and then plus or minus two pi k for the top and the three on the denominator. All right, same idea over here. We're multiplying by one third. That's going to cancel here. Make sure we do that then over here. So one third times five pi over three is going to be. 5 pi over 9, plus or minus. And again, there's nothing on the bottom of 2 pi k, so it's going to end up being a 1. So we end up with 2 pi k over 3. All right, well, a, the other way you may end up seeing these is something like an example 2, where instead of putting a multiplier, they divide in the middle. Same idea, though. Let's go ahead and solve this the same way. Ooh, make a note here, though. They do want us to solve on the interval still of all real numbers. This one's a tangent, though. So remember, tangent we learned last week that tangent doesn't have plus 2 pi k. Tangent only does plus or minus 1 pi k, right? So we got to be mindful of that for tangent, that tangent works a little bit differently than sine and cosine. So let's just solve it first, and we'll come, come back to that. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. We end up with 3 tangent of x over 2 equals negative 3. And then we divide by 3 on both sides. And we get tangent of x over 2 equals negative 1. So we need to figure out where tangent would equal negative 1 at. Now, again, we know there's two solutions. But with tangent, we don't put both solutions. We only put the solution from quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. And let's talk about that why, just as a refresher in case you forgot. Let's put both answers for now. We know tangent is negative in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 4. And it's always negative 1 at that pi over 4 spot. So in quadrant 2, it would be at 3 pi over 4. And in quadrant 4, it would be negative at uh, 7 pi over 4. Well, when I go in here and do this next part, we know that it's plus or minus pi k. The thing is, if you add 1 pi, if you take 3 pi over 4, and add 1 pi to it, well, we need to rewrite that 1 pi. You don't have to write this necessarily. Don't worry about putting this. Since it's pi over 1, we'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by 4. So it ended up with 4 pi over 4, which would give you 7 pi on top over 4. That's this answer. So you don't got to put that answer again. That's dumb. You're doing a lot of extra work. So you only have to do quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 for tangent. That's it. So we don't need this quadrant 4 answer. It can get eliminated. Meaning all we're left with is this one over here. This little space right here that we got to really actually think about. I'm going to separate a little bit. Well, in this one, we now have x over 2. So to cancel out the 2, we have to multiply by 2. And that's going to cancel here, which means we multiply everything over here by 2. So when I work this out, x equals 2 times 3 pi is going to be 6 pi. And then technically, this is 2 over 1. So that 1 over 4 is still going to be 4 plus or minus, And 2 times pi k is going to be 2 pi k 
makes it kind of look like sine and cosine, doesn't it? But it's not. It's still different. And then we could definitely simplify here. Three pi over, or sorry, six pi over four would become divide by two, divide by two. So we know that this would simplify to three pi over two plus or minus two pi k. All right, and over here, we're back to a sine problem. So this one, again, is gonna go back to doing plus or minus two pi k, and you're gonna do the whole circle again. So this one's not gonna be different like that last one was. Uh, the last one was only different because it had that, that tangent answer in there, right? So subtract three from both sides, we get six sine of x over three equals negative three. And we divide by six, divide by six, and we get sine of x over three equals negative three over six, which technically I know I could divide both those by three, right? So negative three divided by three is negative one. Six divided by three is two. So it's really negative one half. So when on the unit circle would sine equal negative one half since sine is the y coordinate, it's gonna be in the third and the fourth quadrant. So I've got two answers again. So x over three. So for the third quadrant, sine would equal negative one half and that's going to happen when the denominator is 6. So for it to be in quadrant 3, it's got to be one bigger. So 7 pi over 6, and then plus or minus 2 pi k. And then for our second answer, since it happens in the fourth quadrant, again, it's over 6. We know that the numerator is 2 times the denominator minus 1. So 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. So 11 pi over 6, plus or minus our 2 pi k. And then in this case, we want to get rid of the 3 in the denominator. So we're going to multiply by 3 and multiply everything here by 3. So x equals 7 times 3. Again, this is 3 over 1. So 7 pi times 3 is 21 pi over 6. Plus or minus 3 times 2 pi k is going to give us 6 pi k. And we know that we could divide 21 and 6 by 3. So this divides by 3 and this divides by 3. So that first answer is going to be x equals 7 pi over 2 plus or minus 6 pi k. And same thing on this second one. Multiply by 3 and multiply everything here by 3. So that cancels. We get x equals uh, 3 times 11 pi is going to be 33 pi over 6 plus or minus 6 pi k. Again, we could divide both those by 3. And when I do that, I'm going to get 11 pi over 2 plus or minus 6 pi k. You can kind of see that when you distribute that, that number in, it always is dividing the denominator. It's always going to cancel with the denominator in that case. So 3 here, we know that 6 divided by 3 is 2. So you can like divide backwards upside down. And you could just put the 2 on the bottom and the numerator to stay the same. So if you see that pattern, you could do it. But you could just keep doing it the way we did it too and get the same answers. Hopefully that helps.